entire team of molecular biologists, microscope builders, computational scientists at the Broad. Um, and what we like to do is we like to provide our local community with various spatial technologies. Um, and this, um, this is, for example, imaging-based technologies like uh, 10x Xenium or, or Merscope. But we also have sequencing-based technologies and multiplex, multiplex immunofluorescence. Um, we, in our free time, we like to play with our toys. We like to find the limits. We like to break some of our methods um, just to see where we can push them. We also offer computational support using Terra and Manifold. And our team recently started providing um, support to, through um, our own computational method called Saldega. And I will feature it very heavily during this talk. So, um, please pay attention later. Um, there is a QR code, you can scan it if you want to learn more about us, but you can also Google us. I'll, I'll skip the slide, but you can see it at the very end of my talk. So um, just to jump straight in, um, choosing the spatial technology always comes with a certain choice. Um, that is a trade-off between the area that we can profile um, and the spatial resolution. But if we want this to be higher, we would have to um, choose very specific genes that we will uh, profile during our experiment. Um, at the same time, and this, so this is, for example, the case for imaging uh, spatial transcriptomics, which I'll sometimes refer to as ST. At the same time, you can go for the entire genome coverage, but then the area of, the, the, of your profiling is going to be much smaller. And then the spatial res resolution is also going to be smaller. And this is the case of the sequencing-based ST. Um, one can avoid this trade-off by increasing the number of experiments of sequencing-based ST, but this very quickly becomes very expensive and is definitely not scalable. So um, I think this is the opportunity for Illumina Spatial Technology uh, with its innovative five centimeter substrate um, that appears to mitigate some of those trade-offs. Um, so to test Illumina ST, we profiled three consecutive days of a mouse embryonic development from E12.5 to E14.5. Those, um, those time points are very important for uh, cortical formation. And our collaborative team sectioned, um, sectioned every 200 microns from the beginning of the forebrain throughout the head um, and placed 10 sections on one of the Illumina um, substrates. That allowed us to profile two millimeters in depth in, on the anterior-posterior axis um, on each of the three substrates that we, were, uh, that we could use. Um, and here you can see on the left side um, an example of such experiment. Um, and in the center, this is a zoom into one of those sections. This is E12.5. Um, and you can see very nice um, profiling of the, of the tissue throughout, throughout the entire section. And after um, the HNE driven cell segmentation that uh, before, um, especially Jasmine mentioned, um, we were very happy to see that between 900 and 1500 unique transcripts per cell, uh, which corresponds to between 600 and 900 genes per cell, um, and a pretty impressive 35, uh, 35 around 35,000 genes, uh, sorry, uh, unique transcripts found uh, on, in this data set. Um, this, of course, depends on the sequencing depth, but um, this is uh, a very, very impressive number. Um, and um, here, I wanted to show you something. As I said before, we kind of tried to push the technologies to the limit. Um, so in attempt to find those limits, we combined the transcriptional um, data from all 30 sections into an individual data set with um, and analyze them all together. And that is uh, 4.3 million cells in, an, in one data set. Um, this, uh, you can see the UMAP on the left side. We wanted to see how, do they, how those cells would mix. And you can see it's pretty, pretty great. Um, you can see that um, not only there is a very little batch effect between the sections, but also between the substrates. We really do not see any kind of um, clear separation. Um, then, of course, we did our clusterings to achieve, uh, we achieved 22 clusters. And just to 
give you um, an example of, of one, uh, one of each of those substrates. Um, you can, again, I hope appreciate that there is um, very nice co correspondence of the clusters between three different time points. So for example, you can see on the outside parts, those are the eyes and they are all the same clusters. And then this kind of like um, little dark red color um, as the subventricular zone of the cortex. Um, so, one interesting aspect of, of this Illumina technology, I mentioned um, this is 35,000 genes. Um, so, it means that it not only is able to leverage the large area of tissue, but also provides the, the entire trans transcriptome as we can define it. Um, and to test whether it matters, we decided to take one specific part of the, of the head, in this case, as I mentioned before, the eye, and we subclustered the eye, uh, the data from the eye using uh, all the data set, all the data, all the genes that we can pick up, um, and then uh, only uh, 19,000 genes that, that are usually used uh, in, um, as annotated genes, and then 5,000 genes that were pre-selected or 1,000 genes that were specific to central nervous system. And what you can see, I hope, is that it really, it really actually matters how many genes you're using for your clustering. And um, especially on the right side, you can see that, um, that the clustering kind of collapses. But even when you go between 35,000 genes and 19,000 genes, you can see that some of those clusters disappear, especially like in this case, that there would be probably this uh, purple cluster of developing cornea. We did the same thing for the brain, entire brain at E12.5, exactly the same time point. Uh, we subclustered using different numbers of genes. And again, I hope you can, I can appreciate, you can appreciate how the, cluster degra uh, the clustering degrades over, um, you know, the, subsetting the genes. Um, and even between 35 and 19,000 genes, you can start, uh, you start losing this um, really nicely defined pink cluster in the subventricular zone of the medial ganglionic eminence. Um, Another thing, and um, Jasmine also kind of started uh, mentioning the same thing, that we noticed that these are not only um, classic annotated genes that everybody's looking at, but we get to see some of the transcripts that are not as commonly seen. Um, and in this case, um, the, those unique 18,000 transcripts that we see uh, correspond to long non coding RNAs, microRNAs, but also something that was very interesting to us several thousand unannotated genes. And do those unannotated genes matter? Well, apparently, yes. This is an example of such an unannotated gene where, which very clearly um, marks the proliferative zone in the mouse brain, this subventricular zone of the entire, um, of the entire brain. And um, well, I, I can say that this makes it a, a potential interesting target for further analysis. Um, and I want to leave you with two more visualizations. This is the, what I mentioned before, Celdega, so um, developed by Nicolas Fernandez from our team. Um, here is um, an example of subcellular resolution. Those big circles, those are cells. Those smaller circle, circles, those are transcripts. And uh, here we are showing collagen in the cartilage a few more clusters, and then a second gene, a second collagen gene that localizes more on the outside part of the brain, sorry, on the outside part of the head, um, more in the area of, of skin and, and bone. And those in individual dots, those are transcripts that as you can see them um, in the um, sub cell resolution. And here, um, in the, this is um, the view from the outside, uh, the red where um, that was cells that were expressed in the collagen 2A1. And then, can you do it in 3D? Well, yes, we can. Um, here is an example uh, of a reconstruction of 1.8 million cells and the total of 2.2 billion reads. Uh, from E14.5 data, uh, data set and the corresponding heat map on the right side. Um, this, these are uh, some meta clusters. Um, this is non brain, and then we will go to the, the, the brain visualization, and uh, the next is one of my favorite parts, which is the cartilage and the cartilage specific genes 
so like um, you can see very nicely how this how this marks uh, within the head. If you would like to hear more about some of those things, I have another presentation. I also need to plug myself in. I have another presentation tomorrow evening at uh, 7.30. I'll show a few more slides. Um, but um, to close off, I just wanted to leave you with a few conclusions. Um, so this new uh, method from Illumina uh, offers the advantages of poly uh, capture while innovating on the size and probably also on, on the subcellular resolution. Um, the method is very accessible. In the end, it only requires classic uh, histology, um, histology equipment in the lab, uh, some molecular bi biology equipment, every single lab, uh, mo histology lab has it. Um, and in my personal opinion, it is great for discovery-oriented profiling uh, of large tissue areas. And uh, as you can see here, reconstruction of the entire organs. <laughs>